Hey guys, this is Fran from coolproject.es producing this video for Les Perfect Cookies blog. This is the first video in a series in which we are going to learn how to calculate the thermal load for a cold room. Let's start with a brief introduction. First of all, what's a cold room? Well, a cold room is a warehouse to store fresh products like fruits, vegetables, meats or fish. Temperature in this room is normally between 0 and 10 degrees. If we want to select the refrigeration equipment for this room, the first thing we have to do is to estimate the thermal load of the cold room. We need to think about the different types of thermal loads that can contribute to rise the temperature in our room. In number one, we have the transmission load. That's a load due to the heat transfer through the walls, roof and floor of the room. This load accounts for 5 to 50% of the total load. In number two is the infiltration load. This load is due to doors opening and usual traffic in the room. Number three is the ventilation load, similar to infiltration load, but sometimes it's necessary to air some products like garlic or onions, which produce a large amount of sulfur vapors we need to remove from the room. For most of fresh products, the air changes due to infiltration are enough to ventilate the chamber. Both infiltration and ventilation loads could account for 1 to 10% of the total load. In number 4 we have the product load. This is usually the most important load, which represents around 55 to 75% of the total. The more information about the product and its management the more accurate calculation we can do. In number 5 and 6 is the occupancy and illumination. We can ignore both of them for cold rooms, because there are not usually people permanently working there. In number 7 we have to consider the equipment load. It is the heat due to evaporator fans and the frost resistances. This load may account for 1 to 10% of the total load. And finally, we must take into account other elements which could contribute to the thermal load, like electric motors or resistances, and so on. Once we have the total thermal load, we'll have to apply some safety and enlargement factors to get the calculation load in order to select the appropriate equipment. On these videos we are going to see how to calculate all these loads step by step, manually. And at the end we'll use a free software, Danfoss Cool Selector, to get a quick calculation. Well, that was the introduction. I hope you liked this introductory video and be ready to start with this course. See you in the next video. Bye!